In this demonstration, we're going to talk a little bit more about chef roles and what chef roles are, what they do, and how they are actually applied to a node. Now, here's how this works. Now, in your organization, you have servers that do specific things. Think about it. You have servers that act as database servers. You have servers that act as load balancers. You have servers that act as HTTP servers. Really, what your servers do is up to you. And every organization is different on how you organize servers and how you define what they do, when they do it, how they're configured, and all that sort of fun stuff. Now, when you think about it, when you define what a server does, you define the role for that server. Now, the definition for a chef role is really along the lines of the definition that you use for a role for your server. And it's divided basically into what a server knows how to do. Now, servers can have multiple roles depending on maybe where they're at. For example, you may have different environments where you know, server A may work as an HTTP server in a development environment, but may be an actual database server in a production or a test environment. So how you define what your server does or what the role your server is is completely up to you. And Chef doesn't change that. Chef just says, if you have a role, if this server does a specific thing, what we can do is we can just give it a role and we can assign a role to a node. And that's what we're going to do here. Let me explain to you what I have on my desktop. I have Windows PowerShell, and this is the administration terminal. I have on my upper right-hand side is I have my user ID and password information, and that's if I need to copy and paste this to log into a node. I just have it handy. You probably don't even need to be very concerned with that. And on the left-hand side is the focus of what we're going to talk about or continue to discuss is defining a actual role. Now, what we have here is I created a file called webserver.json. It's a JSON or JSON file, depending on your dialect. And this defines, as it's written here, a role for a specific node. And let me show you where this actually lives. Now, again, rather than you watching me type this, I just have it all ready for you up on the screen so you can just take a look at it. But this is where it lives. When you define a role, it's in the chef repo dot roles folder. Now, remember, roles have nothing to do with recipes and nothing right now to do with a node except just be a role. And it'll be assigned to a node soon, but right now it's not. And we're calling it web server, and it's a JSON file. And let me show you what's in here. We're creating a role which name is web server. We get to call it whatever we want it. And we have some default attributes here. We have a default Apache attribute greeting, my greeting. But more importantly, let me show you what we have here. We have a run list in this specific role. And what this run list does is it applies the Apache cookbook, really, to this actual role. So we need to do a few things here. The uh, first thing that we did, again, is we created this webserver.json file. Now what we need to do is we need to actually add this role. And we could do this from the administrator's council or the administrator's council. And we can type in using our trusty knife command, knife space role space from file webserver dot json. And what we're doing now is we're actually creating a role web server. I don't know if I had one out there. I may have. So your verbose output might be a little bit different than mine. But we just ran the knife command 
to create a role from file web server JSON. Now, let's look at the run list for a node. Let's use the knife utility and go to node, show, first node. This is the node that we've been using. Knife node show first node. And the administrator's console is going out to chef server. And it's showing that we have in the run list, this is the important part, we have a recipe, Apache. So it lists some information about our node, but we're specifically interested in the run list. Now, what we're going to do now is we're going to remove this from the run list and add the role to the node. And that would look like the following. I'm going to type in knife node run list remove first node kind of a long one here recipe make this a little bit longer Apache and before I hit that magic enter key let me just take a quick look at my syntax and it'll give you a chance to look at it in more detail as well knife node run list remove first node recipe Apache so I just hit the magic enter button and what this is doing is it's going to chef server and it's removing this from the run list for first node now what we can see here is first node has no run list we have just removed it so what we're going to do now is we're going to add the role to this node first node and we do it via a knife so knife node run list add first node you're already getting the hint that you're going to have to know the knife utility pretty well. You'd be right. So let's add the role web server. And let me take a look at my syntax again, and this will give you a chance to further digest this line of code. Knife node run list add first node role web server. And I believe that looks correct. So I hit enter, and the administrator's workstation went up to chef server and added the role. So here we go. And you see the run list, and we added this role to the run list. So let's review what we did. We created a custom role. We went into the administrator's workstation. We removed any recipes or anything from the run list for the node. Then what we did is we added the actual role to the run list for the node. And, of course, we created the actual role first. So we create the role, add the role to the node, and we're all set. This concludes my demonstration. Thank you so much for watching.